Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Welcome to the Unity 5 RPG tutorial. This is going to be the first part. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how we create our maps inside of Tiled, which is a free tile map editor that you can get online. I believe the website is Tiled. Um, let me find the website for you. They go mapeditor.org. Uh, so you can download this for free from there. I'm using version 0.11.0, so version 11, I would presume. Um, and this is a fantastic tool for creating our RPG maps since this is a two-dimensional game. As some of you might know, the Unity editor isn't that great for creating 2D tiled, um, 2D tiled maps and that's mainly because its focus is geared toward 3D development. Now I've seen a lot of uh, plugins that you can buy on the app, on the, what do they call it, the asset store. Um, just download them and load them into your project and that also works as well but for me personally i've found that working in tiled has been much simpler and much more efficient in terms of actually being able to create content and not deal with you know complex scripts and loading things in and things of that nature so to begin with our RPG series, I've created a couple of maps myself. Um, these are going to be the maps that I'm using for the demo. I've already created these, but I'll show you how I did these and how you can do your own. So long story short, you start off in the player's house, you exit the front doors, you're going to be taken to this sort of forest map, I presume. Um, and then as you venture through the forest, you'll encounter some monsters and you'll eventually make it to the gates of the kingdom where... I don't know, your princess awaits, um, I suppose. That'll be the basis of our quest system or something like that. Anyway, to begin with, I've got some resources. These resources are tiles and sprites. Sprites for our characters, tiles for our tiles. Uh, go figure. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just, uh, these are the LPC, I think that was the Liberated Pixel Championship. Someone correct me on that if that's wrong, but these are all from Open Game Art. You can download these for free and use them in your games commercial or free because they're CC0. I'm going to take the entire lot of these and I'm just going to drag them and drop them straight onto tiled. It's going to ask me to create a new tile set for all of them and uh, I'm going to leave all the default settings as they are because these are 32 by 32 pixel tiles and I'm just going to have to spam click this OK button until all those tiles have been loaded into the game. Uh, okay. Signpost 3, we can cancel that one because that one doesn't work properly. Uh, was that the last one? I think... No, we've got these ones here. Let's just quickly load those up. There we go. So, once all the files have been loaded in, you should have these tile sets. And if yours are like mine, they're all in separate files, that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to navigate over to... Let's create this sort of, you know, foresty map here. I'm going to show you how we did that. So, I'm going to go to Grass. Now the amazing thing about the tool that we'll be using to convert these tiled maps into Unity files is that it has the ability to transform uh, collision data from tiled and turn that into polygon collisions within Unity, which is fantastic for us because that means that we don't have to do it ourselves. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to first create a map. So I've, I've actually gone file, new map, I did this um, before I started recording. And then I loaded these tile sets in, but you could do that in whatever order you like. Um, I'm just going to fill this, you know, with some grass. There we go. We've got a little bit of grass on the map. Now, obviously, you're going to want a dirt path, you know, running through that grass. Something, something like what I've got here, you know, a dirt path with some trees on it. I'm also going to rename this layer at the top right just by simply right click on it and select uh, rename. Is there a rename? There isn't a rename. Layer properties, maybe. There you go. And then changing it down here in the name or just simply double clicking on it until it uh, opens up as a text field where you can type in grass. Now I'm going to create a new layer by clicking this, uh, it's a new icon and I'm going to click add tile layer. I'm going to call this uh, path. There we go. Now, now that we have two layers, you can turn these on and off at will. That basically separates our tiles into different layers. So grass and path will be below the player. We'll have some other layers, things like tree base, which will be below the player. And we'll also have layers that are above the player, like foliage. The next thing I'm going to do, like I said, come down and select a dirt from your tiles. This is where it gets kind of interesting. There's an icon down here that's called uh, Edit Terrain Information. If you select this icon, this is going to allow us to turn this into an auto tile. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag... Oh, sorry, I need to create one first. <laughs> Click the little plus in the bottom left corner. I'm going to call this Dirt. There we go. Now all I need to do is just drag a square like this around these tiles. So that sets up your top left corner, 
your top tile, top right corner, um, right, left, down, bottom left, and bottom right. Then also select this inside tile, which gives us our main uh, source tile. And then finally, what we need to do is select the outside edges of this uh, top right corner, and that's gonna give us our, um, our auto tile inside corners for the auto tiles. Once that's done, you can close that window. And now we can switch uh, down here to this, um, you just click on terrain and then click on dirt. And as you see, as I move this around, it's creating the entire dirt path. So this block in the center. Now if I place two of these next to each other, what you'll see is that it actually auto tiles these nicely, just like, you know, RPG Maker would. Um, so I'm just gonna drag out a nice little wooden, not a wooden, sorry, a dirt path, something like that. And there's our dirt path, simple as that. The next thing we're gonna do is create a new layer, another tile layer. I'm gonna call this tree base. Now I'm gonna go and find my trees in my sprites over here. I think I've got some, can't remember exactly where they are. I do have some, um, they go plant repack. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place down the base of the trees on this layer. So I'm just gonna place some, you know, I'm just gonna select and drag to select multiple tiles at once. And I'm just gonna place you know, some trees around the map, just like this. That's one type of base tree. I want to place another one there. And then I'm going to select the other type of tree and I'm just going to place those in, you know, in the, in the other spaces, uh, like that. Now I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to call this tree tops or, you know, foliage or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to select the tops of the trees now. And I'm just going to paste those, oops onto the right tree bases. Now they don't all have to start at the same height. You can make them smaller and larger. It's totally up to you. Uh, sorry, that was the wrong tree. So this one like that and this one like that. There we go. I think that was all of those trees. Yes, it was. And now I'll select the other tree tops and place those again. Same deal, they don't all have to be at the same height. This is just, this is a flexible tile set because it does give you the ability to raise and lower those trees on those uh, tree tops. Now, if you look at our layer structure in the top right hand corner, you'll see that we have all these layers on separate, um, sorry, all these tiles on separate layers, which gives us a really nice way to position our player within our map. So we can have the tree tops above our player and the tree bases below our player. Now, as we move forward in the tutorial, you'll notice that in my maps that I've created earlier, I haven't done the layers as ideally as I've explained here. So we will have some issues in my versions of the maps where the player will be walking under a rock or something like that. But that can be easily corrected by coming back into your tile editor and making the necessary adjustments. Now we need some collision items, you know, things like rocks and, um, you know, just some decals to go on the map, I suppose. So let's go to, I believe it's called rock. There it is. Now this is a really interesting feature I'm gonna show you about uh, tiled. If you select both of these tiles, so just click and drag, and then you come to the top left here, there is a button that says random mode. Now, as you'll see, as I move this uh, around on the map, my tile is randomly switching between both of those rocks. This is pretty cool because this gives us the ability to just, you know, click and place some decals around on the world. If you have, you know, many different kinds of decals, it's, it's quite an efficient way to lay down some rocks on the path and you know they'll all be different um oh i've done that on the treetops layer that was my bad let me undo that create a new layer for this sorry call this uh, path decals that's what i'm going to call it and i'm just going to place them around the map like this um just randomly clicking and i'll let the randomizer from within um tile deal with which tile it places for me now Path decals is above treetops, which is not what we want. So if you select the layer path decals and click the little down arrow just until it's above path. Now you'll see what happens if we moved it below path, those rocks would go underneath the path. That's not what we want. We want path decals to be just above the path. Now we've got some paths. What else can we load? Um, let's pull in some, there is a really nice uh, grass tile set that actually has, if I can find it, it actually has quite a lot of uh, different variations of grass. I think it might be, yes, yeah, this one here. So in the grass LPC tile set at the bottom here, you'll see we've got these three different types of grass. You know, just a little bit of a, a little bit of weeds coming through the grass just to break up the monotony of having just a solid green color on the floor. So I'm gonna select those three tiles. I'm gonna go back down to our grass layer, make sure random mode is selected. And I'm just gonna paint on 
just a few of these randomly, you know, just to give the map some life. There we go. Already our map is starting to look a little bit better. Now if I can zoom in just simply by, uh, I think it was plus and minus keys on your keyboard, you'll be able to see that we are looking much better. Um, the other thing that we'll add is some flowers. I think there are some flower sprites in the LPC sprite pack. If I can find them in time, that would be nice. Uh, what have we got? Oh, some barrels. We're going to have some barrels. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another another layer just above path decals this time. And I'm going to call this uh, objects. Just, you know, misc objects or something like that. And I'm going to pull that down just so it's above path decals. What that's going to give us is the ability to place down... What's going on? Oh, it's random mode, sorry. Turn random mode off. There we go. Now we can place down some, you know, stuff and it'll be in front of those rocks. So, like this. You know, we need some we need some barrels. We're making an RPG. Can't have an RPG without barrels. There we go. Someone's just left their wares on the path. Or something like that. <laughs> oh, we can't do that either. There we go. Let's place some barrels down. Right. Flowers. Where are our flowers? And basically, this is, you know... This is just basically how we create some of the tile map. Once I've done the, the flowers, I will move on. I promise. Where are they? If I can't find the flowers, I'm just going to have to um, move on without them, I suppose. Because they don't appear to be anywhere. No, looks like I can't. Right. I, may not have, I may not have the flowers in this folder of icons. Anyway, we'll move on without the flowers for now. So, we have the basis of our map down. The final thing that you're going to want to do is create a sprite that is the same size as your tile set, so 32 by 32 in this case. And you're just gonna make a, just a red sprite, 00255, oh sorry, 25500 in RGB values, just red, pure old red. And if I can find it, there it is, it's called red. I've named it red, that's all it is, it's a red sprite. Now I'm going to create a new layer, it's going to be a tile layer, and I'm going to call this Collisions. And this is going to be the layer that we add the collisions to our game with. You can add collisions to individual tiles, and you can also shape them, which is quite nice, but this is the simple way to get them just on the map. Okay, so with the red tile selected, you come to the View menu bar and select Tile Collision Editor. This will open up a new window for you. I personally open up this zoom and I pull it right up to about 800, maybe even higher than that, maybe even 1600%. Make it so that you can see everything and then select the square rectangle tool, which you will then use to drag a square out that is the same dimensions as the tile. That's the reason why we've zoomed in so close. Now in doing that, we've basically said that everything within this rectangle is going to be a collision object or basically it will have a collider attached to it within unity which will allow us to collide with these walls as you would expect um, so once you've set up your collision inside of the tile collision editor that's very important don't forget to do this um, you can close that window off and then on your collisions map you can begin to draw some collisions some places that you don't want the player to walk on so for instance uh, I might put these tree trunks on there and this uh actually i'll leave the i'll leave the buckets for now that's fine uh just like this uh and you're basically just going around adding places that the player cannot walk it's as simple as that there we go i'll put these as collision elements as well oops oh yeah that one was fine now you obviously seeing the problem that i'm having here is that we can no longer um we can't see anything underneath these collisions. That's slightly, that's a slight problem. So what you do is you just right click on this uh, collisions layer, select layer properties, and then there's an opacity value. Change that from 1.0, and I'm gonna change that to be say 0.2, which will make it, you know, 20% 20 um, uh, twenty percent opaque, I think the word is, 20% opacity, whatever the word is. Or you could use this slider up here as well, which I just noticed, which is 10 times easier. Yeah, just click on the layer, and drag the opacity slider from all the way at the top to a little bit down so you can see through it. What this has given us is the ability to see the tiles underneath the collision elements. You could also just turn the layer on and off. 
you know, using the, the layers. So that's it for this tutorial, I suppose. Simply save the map. I'm not gonna save this one. Oh, actually, I will save this one. Demo map, there we go. Um, on your system, into a folder, into the, into the game project, if you will, um, any way you like, because we're gonna be using another tool to convert that into a Unity object. So just to uh, go over it again, you can create a few maps in your downtime between this video and the next one. I suppose the next video will go up fairly soon since this video hasn't really been substantial. Um, but yeah, just to show you guys some of the maps that I've created, I've got the player's internal house, I've got some of these um, these forests and you know another forest here and a third forest which has a little path that takes you into the the king's castle or you know the the main village or something like that so that's basically how you create the maps and how you set up the collisions in the next video i'll show you how we convert these maps into unity objects that we can bring into unity for our project so thank you guys for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to like it and subscribe to my youtube channel um, and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye for now